Hello, Corey here from the Bosco YouTube channel. Thank you for joining me. A few weeks ago, I made a video on box table of ornaments. And uh, I explained all about what I know about box table of ornaments and how they apply to various pieces uh, from Bach. Uh, this video is a sort of an offshoot on that because this um, addresses a type of trill uh, that, that I've developed or discovered called the polyrhythm trill. It's not described anywhere in books. It's not described by the composers or the theorists. It's something that I've just sort of come about uh, by my own accord. And I, I want to share this with you. This is an absolutely uh, genius way to solve the trill problem in, in some of these pieces that have extended trills in them. So the first piece I'm going to talk about is uh, Mozart's very famous K545 sonata, you know. Okay, now there's the famous trill in measure 25, the way you have, where we have the famous trill there. So that, that's a problem. It's a problem for a lot of students because a lot of uh, less advanced piano students don't have the technique to play trills very fast. And they, they almost always stop here and get frustrated and caught up with the trill because they're trying to do it, uh, well, they're trying to do it incorrectly. And I'll show you why it's incorrect, okay? So most people, most pianists virtually all pianists assume that trills always have to be two notes against one note. So I'm going to slow this down a little bit so I can show you. So your, your, your most pianists think that if you slow this down, it's going to be like this. So I'm, I'm going to play it from measure uh, 23. think it should be that way because that's the way it usually is in Bach. Uh, usually most of the time I would say in classical music as well, most of the time I would say probably 70-80% of the time trills are you want to play two trill notes for every one left hand note. So in this case you would have 30 second notes for the trill and then you have 16th notes here. All, that's all nice and good and fine and dandy if it's slow. Okay, but what are you going to do if you s speed it up a little bit? So now let's play more of a, uh, I guess, proper, whatever proper is. Let, let's play more of a proper allegro for this now. And by the way, I don't have a metronome because I my metronome is on my phone and I'm using my phone to record this video. And I didn't feel like getting one on on. Uh, on the internet. So I'll do this all with no metronome because it, you can easily do it with no metronome. So I'm going to speed it up a little bit. I'm going to take this tempo. So I'm going to go over to measure 23. So I was probably in the 90s, close to 96, because I, I like that speed. So I was close to 96, and I couldn't play the trill. I... Wow, I start tightening up there. So there's something false about that. Even if I were able to do that trill perfectly at an even faster speed, perhaps, even if I could do it, it would sound ridiculous. The sound, the, the trill would be much too fast for the speed of the music. So I'll often suggest to students who don't have, a, you know, the trill technique down yet, just for the sake of getting through the passage, 
to just play one note per one trill note for every one left hand note. This is just a practice. I, I don't say to perform it this way. So there's also doing, you can do it this way. That way you can, you can afford to go much faster and you won't get messed up with the trill. That's a good way for less advanced students to practice the trill just to get through it. But eventually you're gonna have to speed the trill up. But here's the problem, we're at a quandary. If this is too slow, if that's too slow for a trill, and, and that's too fast, for, oh, I did it, I got it that time. And that's too fast for a trill, then what do we do? Well, what about midway between one and two? So if one trill note for one left hand note is too slow, and two trill notes are too fast, then what about one and a half trill notes? This isn't a joke, I mean one and a half notes. So for every 16th note in the left hand, you're gonna have one and a half trill notes. That means that if you have two 16th notes in the left hand, that is the eighth note, then you're gonna have three trill notes because one and a half and plus one and a half is three. In other words, you're gonna have three trill notes for every two left hand notes, see? So if this is too slow, and this is too fast, then this should be just about right. And that's about right, and that works perfectly. Let me slow it down so you can hear the three against two. much better than, than that, see? So this is a really, really good example of, a, of somewhere where you're perfectly justified playing a, a polyrhythm trill, as I call it. In this case, you would choose three trill notes in the right hand for every two sixteenths in the left hand. Okay, that's a three against two polyrhythm trill. Now, for the four against three polyrhythm trill. And that can be found in Clementi's Sonatina number four in the third movement. It goes like the... Goes like that. So, uh, turn to the second half. <laughs> of that, that one, two, three measures over, you'll see a trill. You'll see the left hand is going. So the left hand has. And that's about, that's about the speed of the piece. It's pretty fast. It's an allegro vivace. So now, okay, let's look at the trill. Okay, most students or most pianists who play this try to do this. Okay, they try to go, and I'll slow it down to about half speed. I'll play two trill notes for every one left hand note. So. Okay, once again, I'm gonna take it from the beginning of this section. trills like that. That sounds fine. That's perfect when played at half speed. But the problem is when you speed it up, when you play it at full speed, the trill, like in the Mozart example, the trill is virtually impossible to play. You just can't do it. It's just too fast. So once again, you don't want to go... do 
that and you don't want to go you don't want to do that but you want to do something in between so here is a case where i would do four trill notes for every three left hand notes because the beat is really on that triplet it's on that triplet uh 16th note so if you have that the right hand trill is so you have two brains <laughs> or your brain is split into two the left side of your brain is playing triplets the right side is playing quadruplets the good news is you only have to do it for two beats but if you watch my video on how to play four against three polyrhythms as applied to Chopin's fantasy impromptu then you'll learn that boy in Chopin's fantasy impromptu it does the same thing but it does it like for two full pages you know, in the first section. So be happy it only occurs for two trill notes. So you don't want to play, you don't want to do that, and because you'll crash and burn and you won't be able to do the trill. <coughs> so the Mozart K545 and this Clementi Opus 36 number three, these are the, you know, there's many more examples too. Uh, I couldn't think of any offhand because I was actually teaching this Clementi the other day and it made me think of this. But there are, yeah, there are several examples that you could probably find in the classical music repertoire where if you play a literal measured trill for two trill notes, it, it's too fast or humanly impossible. And if you do it one note it's too slow so you have to go in between which would mean you're going to do some kind of polyrhythm trill either three against two like in the mozart example or four against three in this uh clementi example here and that solves the problem it really does solve the problem very easily very easily the trills sound really great the trills sound perfect if you if you play them uh, in this fashion, if you play good measured polyrhythm trills, uh, I wouldn't do it for every trill, but there there are, I would say, probably, I would estimate probably 20%, maybe 15 to 20% of, maybe, I don't know, 15% of all classical trills like in Clementi or Mozart or something uh, would justify you know, because of the tempo would justify the, um, the polyrhythm trill in that case. So I'm estimating about 15% of trills should be polyrhythm trills. So when you're having problems with trills, don't rule out the possibility of polyrhythm trills. They work really, really well. And no one ever thinks of these things except me. That's why you should join my channel and subscribe to The Well-Rounded Piano so you can learn more from me. Uh, it, it, <laughs> if you can find anybody talking about polyrhythm trills, then put, the, put some comments down below this video because I'm not, I don't know, I haven't really checked, but I don't think anybody really else, I don't think anybody else is really talking about this, about polyrhythm trills. This is my own sort of uh, discovery. So um, please let me know if I'm wrong about that. But uh, thank you for viewing this video and I hope that this will really help you settle the trill issue once and for all. So stay tuned for more videos like this in the future.